Hello guys, today we are going to be talking about the cultivation of the jute crop. So without wasting much of our time, we are going to move on with the cultivation of the jute crop. So first of all, before we proceed, the botanical name of the crop jute is Cochros. So you can just note it down, that's C-O-R-C-H-O-U-R-S. This is the botanical name of a jute crop. So, by the way, my name is McDonald Elisha Mtuma. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell so you can not miss other videos which are related to agriculture. So, we are going to move on with the time of sowing of a jute crop. Which is the best time to sow the jute crop? Sowing of a jute crop may differ from area to area. It also differs from place to place. This is, an, this is in accordance with the environment, temperature, and climate. So we are saying sowing time of jute may differ from area to area on the basis of the receipt of pre-monsoon showers, availability of residual moisture and variety. Generally, sowing in middle of March is optimal. So not jute is sown in the mid-March mid-march you can just note it down mid-march so we are saying generally sowing in middle of march is optimum for all capsularis varieties and the olitorious varieties like jr052 jr0878 etc etc this should be sown only after middle of april so it's from march middle of march and also mid April. So note that uh, we have just uh, examined the two species or the two varieties of jute crop. We have the capsularis varieties and the olitorius varieties. That's capsularis varieties and the other one is olitaris varieties. These ones which I'm just underlining here. These are the varieties of jute crop. In Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, sowing is done up to mid-July, as per the onset monsoon. So meaning in other states, as I mentioned before, like jute is sown up to mid-July in areas like Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. We move on to the different methods of sowing. Sowing of jute can be done either by broadcast method or by line sowing method. Presently, 5 to 10 percent of the area is hardly covered under line sowing in India. It has been established by the scientists that by adopting line sowing yield can be increased by 15 to 20 percent over broadcast method. Meaning, in jute crop, line sowing is much preferable as referred to broadcasting sowing method. So here we have two methods of sowing, the broadcast method and the line sowing method. This I have just uh, underlined. To ensure even distribution of seed, they are mixed with three to four times well pow powdered soil and broadcast crosswise. And after germination, the excess plants are thinned out to maintain spacing of 10 centimeters plant to plant. So you can also take note of the spacing of the jute crop that's 10 centimeters plant to plant. 10 centimeters plant to plant. The spacing of jute, of jute crop is much important as we're talking about line sowing. For line sowing, the land is prepared well and sowing is done with the row to row spacing of capsularis 30 cm, olitorius 25 cm, and plant to plant spacing is maintained at 5 to 7 cm, and this is done by mechanical means, meaning this is done by the use of a seed drill. So, without wasting much of the time, we move on to the land preparation of a jute crop. Land preparation. All right. 
Land preparation of a jute crop. What is required in order to set up a field to grow jute? All right. Jute seeds, being small, require very fine tooth. So we already know that in order for us to plant a jute crop, we need a fine tooth. The land can be prepared by plowing and cross harrowing three to five times followed by planking. In acidic soils which have pH uh, greater than, which has pH less than 6.0 in cooperation, 30 to 40 days before sowing is necessary for better crop performance. Soil moisture between 21 to 45% is considered ideal for proper germination. So we are simply saying in order for a jute crop to grow, in order for it to surpass germination, it needs moisture which is about 25, 21 to 45% moisture soil moisture for germination soil moisture for germination if these temperatures are exceeded meaning the germination of jute crop will be reduced seed technologies seed rate in kilograms per hectare so this depends or it varies with the varieties of jute crop, the species. We have got the capsularis, the olitoris. Under broadcasting is 10 kg per hectare and uh, in line sowing that's 7 kg per hectare. In olitorias that's 7 kg per hectare and in line sowing that's 5 kg per hectare. Fertilizer management. So here in general, the nutrient requirement of capsularis is more than that of olitaris. So we are simply saying capsularis, it needs more nutrients other than olitaris. In soils with low organic carbon content, farmyard manure application is done at a rate of 5 to 10 tons per hectare. A month prior to crop sowing is recommended, meaning a month before sowing jute, Farmyard manure can be applied at the rate of 5 to 10 tons per hectare. Farmyard manure applied at the rate of 5 to 10 tons per hectare. The leaf fall from the standing crop and also root stubbles left in the soil after harvest results in the recycling of handsome amount of nutrients besides organic matter in intensive cropping systems. Depending on soil fertility status, recommendations for use of fertilizers are as shown in the table below. So, other than farmyard manure, uh, duty crop also requires fertilizers like nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. That's NPK. And as you can see in this table, these are the different rates to apply on the soil with uh, according to species and species we have nitrogen applied on olitoris that's 40 to 80 kg per hectare then capsularis is 60 to 8 kg per hectare in phosphorus that's 20 to 40 kg per hectare and in capsularis that's 30 to 40 kg per hectare we come to potassium in olitoris that's 20 to 40 kg capsular is 30 to 40 kg per hectare. We move on to water management. How much water is needed by the jute crop in order for it to grow? Jute requires about 50 centimeters of water for its growth and development. So we say 50 centimeters of water of H2O is required for the growth and development of a jute crop is required for the growth and development of the crop of the jute crop in india about 15% jute area is irrigated and the remaining area is rain fed 
if the rainfall is not sufficient, the water requirement has to be supplemented through irrigation. For germination of jute, for germination of jute seed, about 18 to 20 percent soil moisture is required. At sowing time, if the soil moisture is not sufficient, then one pre-sowing irrigation is to be given. I think this is clear. After sowing, usually one or two irrigations at an internal at an interval of about 20 days is required at the initial stages of growth. Thereafter, monsoon rain supplement the irrigation. I think this was clear. We move on to the weed management. Jute crop suffers from heavy weed infestation in the initial six to eight weeks after sowing. Two to three hand weedings or mechanical bones are required to arrest weed manner. The first two manual weedings are combined with thinning operations at 20 or 35 days. So we can also realize that there are also other methods uh, which are used to treat weeds. We can use chemical methods, we can use biological methods, we can use cultural methods. When we are talking about cultural methods, we are talking about hand weeding and, and rowing. These are cultural methods. Then when we move on to chemical methods, we are talking about use of herbicides and use of pesticides to control weeds like thyram and carbendazine. When we move on to biological methods of controlling weeds, we are simply talking about introducing another biological factor which is going to feed on, this, on these weeds. Okay, I think that was clear. So, uh, we are going to move on to the harvesting of a jute crop. Jute is a best fiber crop. Why is jute harvested? Why is jute cultivated? So, jute is mainly cultivated for its fiber crop and can be harvested at any stage after a certain period of vegetative growth, usually between 100 to 150 days. Harvesting of jute crop at pre bud or bud stage gives best quality fiber. However, the yields are low and older and older crop yields more quantity of fiber but the fiber becomes coarse and the stem does not red properly hence as a compromise between quality and quantity any pod formation stage has been found best for harvesting a hundred to hundred and ten days crop may also be harvested to facilitate transplanting of paddy in time Harvesting is done by cutting the plants at or close to the ground level with sharp sickles. In flooded lands, the plants are uprooted. The harvested plants are left in the field for two to three days for the leaves to shed. Next, the plants are tied into bundles 20 to 25 centimeters of diameter and the branching tops are lipped off in the field. Rating. We move on to rating. Rating is one of the important operations governing the quality of fiber as prevailed at present. The bundles are kept in 30 cm deep water and later placed side by side in rating water, usually in two to three layers and tied together. So we are simply saying that the bundles are kept in 30 cm deep water and later placed side by side in rating water, usually in, three to, in two to three layers and they are tied together. Rating is best done in slow moving large volume of clean water. The optimum temperature is around 34 degrees Celsius. Note that the temperature which is optimum for rating of water is 34 degrees Celsius. 34 degrees Celsius. Noted, 
the rating process is completed in 8 to 30 days when the bags separate out easily from the stick or wood and the fibers are ready for extraction. We move on to the yield. Last but not least, yield of jute significantly and the highest jute seed yield is 719.4 kg per hectare. So, uh, this is the end of our this is the end of our topic, the cultivation of a jute crop. So, in order for you to receive some other videos which are related to agriculture, make sure you like, you share, you subscribe, and you also turn on the notification bell so you cannot miss some other videos which are related to agriculture. Agriculture is not only just for students of agriculture, but you also need agriculture in order to sharpen your mind, in order to stay sharp and have a basic understanding on agriculture. Thank you so much. Have a great day.